Hello, all you wonderful beans out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is DevTales and Art Martin Stream. We are going to be working on our SCAR system, and uh, yeah, we've also got Conrad here, who is doing some 3D modeling work. Uh, he is open for commissions, by the way, everybody, if you would like to grab one. Uh, there is also a tip goal going on. Uh, his current, uh, he's currently running with a 1080 GPU. Um, it's, uh, failing him. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys can support, please consider doing so and helping us get a new graphics card for him. Uh, so he can properly do his work. Alright. Where should we start? Um, probably could just have us go over like the rest of the shit in the move proposal. I mean, we haven't really gotten, I don't think, any real feedback yet, but we also no. did ping. Yep. Tip the swear jar. You didn't make magic? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, don't even care because whatever, it was worth it. Not even a minute into the stream and already. Your coworker came into the office sick, then complained to the boss you were uncomfortable as an excuse to leave because you asked them to put on a mask. Oh, one of those people. It's like, I don't like wearing masks myself, but I will do it. Masks you do should... suck if you have a beard, but you yeah. should still wear them if you're sick. Yeah, exactly. Normalize wearing masks. Truly, <laughs> this is the dankest dungeon. Tell Darius tipped $5. It was worth it. I haven't really gotten any fucking feedback but that does not mean that we should ignore it considering that you know we did ping everyone about it like all the games so, so. There are a couple things that we need to actually, like, you know, still go over in terms of it. Okay. Uh, first off, um, there's the old miscellaneous section. I know we got rid of charge up and cool down. How do we feel about things such as interactions with equipment, change of opponents type, change of own type, and damage affected by stats? Uh, this dock. Yeah, it's the bottom most section. Um. Well, change of opponent's type, I like the 20 for that. Change of own type, I'd say, I feel like 10 is good for that. Uh, I'll make a note that this effect is after That way they can't change their type, so that way they get a stab at the beginning of a move. Ah, yes. No worries, Era. Uh... Hmm. 
damage affected by stats per damage. I say remove that. Yeah. Because, like, the only things that come to mind for that are, like, uh, I know there's some moves where they do extra damage if you're heavier or such, but... Yeah. There's also things like punishment. I say it's something up to the storyteller. Yeah. Uh, if, if, by the way, uh, if it helps, uh, what punishment does is uh, it's a Pokemon move and it gets stronger uh, every increased stat stage the target has. But yeah. Also, can you tell that I happen to like dark type things considering that I also happen to know that shit off the top of my head? Hmm. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, interactions with equipment. That Do you just want to keep... That one's hard to quantify because what yeah. kind of interaction, you know? That's why it was a dash originally because it was so broad, but we wanted to include it to go like... You know, it's fine if they want to do things with it. It's just we don't have a standardized cost. Yeah, that sounds good to me. We can include some examples, like for specifically doing more damage to armor. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll have an example for that, but... Uh, other things, uh, the AOE, do we want to change AOEs? Like, the price. I think I'm good with those prices as is. If anything, right. I might want them to go down a little bit, but... What, like 9, 18, 27? Yeah, that would work. Uh, do we want Fury to change it all? Actually, I'm still on the AoEs. Um,. That sphere one especially feels so punishing. Well, that's also because it it's the most powerful one by far. Like, because you got to remember that even the basic level one sphere, what it'll do is it it targets four squares, and then having level two targets ten squares. And well, it's like it's like an exponential growth thing. Yeah, but my reason for that is the XP cap. Yeah. Uh, let's just make it 25, then. I'm good with that. Uh, just to make it more in line with the others, I'd say... Mm, 10, 15, 25. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Ten, fifteen, twenty-five works works with me. 
Cones are cones will be strong, but then again, cones also require careful positioning, so. Um Alright, Fury. Fury's complicated. Fury is very strong, however, it also puts restrictions on the user. How are we feeling about Fury? Um... Considering the XP cap, I think we should drop it to 30. And the limitations. Mm. Like, I know it's powerful, but we also don't want to make it where, well, you're not going to be able to use it at all until you're late game. Yeah. The one thing that I do want to keep in mind, though, is that late game... If you put Fury on something, you'll have, like, it'll be a drop in the bucket of your XP. Like, even, like, at, uh, let, let's say, Attribute 20, like, it'll be a third of your XP pool, sure, but you can absolutely, um, considering that at XP 20, you'd be at a cap of 4, 8, 12 damage? And so that'd be 60 plus 40 is 100. For 100 XP, you could have a move that's at power cap and has Fury on it. So... Like, Fury is a very strong effect. It is more meant for, like, being better mid and late game than it is for early game. Fair. We can leave it as is. Especially considering that, uh, since we did raise the XP cap, like, you know, slightly, like, now, like, even just from 10 to 14, you have 60 XP move cap, which means that it's enough that if you have a Fury move, you can buy, like, you know, 2 power and level 1 range on it. Uh, short range. Which isn't a lot, but then again, it's a Fury thing, so it's not meant to do, like, a lot of damage at the beginning. That's not the exact purpose. <laughs> All right. Uh, some other things to discuss... Uh, right now, permanent negative one stage stat changes are literally useless. No one will ever use those. Sorry, what was that? Uh, up in stat changes, like the, like, mm -hmm. you know, stat up and stat down. Permanent level one negatives are useless and no one will ever use them. Like, for self for like the negative side of it not debuffing an enemy debuffing yourself no one will ever do stage one debuff because there's no incentive to go for permanent negative one over temporary because remember you get the first one for free so since you don't have to pay those 10 versus 6 you don't pay those anyways you just you know, since, since you don't pay for it, it wouldn't count for the XP cost, really. I see what you mean. 
Uh, what's your suggestion? So, my suggestion is we make it so that way... Um, maybe... Because I have a couple ideas in mind, but I'm trying to make one, think of one that won't fuck up everything relating to it. So, if I go over to this... I could... Um, hmm. Uh, Raijin, it's literally just how they wind up deciding to run their games. Yep. Honestly, I would love to have some more good old standard dungeon crawling. Yeah, which I will, which I will be doing. That's literally the point of, like, having done the ruin setup, at least for Starlight. It's just also that, you know. Only so much I could do if characters want to have character, you know, interaction moments. But yeah, there 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 will be a fair amount of dungeon crawling in Starlight. Classical like like I promised, classical PMD adventuring. Um, okay. So one thing that I could think up is you get the XP, like you don't have to pay the XP cost, but it still contributes to the XP cap. So you get the effect for free, like you don't have to pay the XP cap, but it still contributes. Which would solve that problem however it would also throw in a different problem of like you know people's uh like xp that that like it playing with the xp cap a lot and specifically it kind of fucking up some people's xp cap stuff that would fix that problem however that'd be a different one You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Another thing we could do is just kind of accept it and let it be, but also, like, you know, make a note about it. I don't know if I really want to do that, but that is something that we could do. I say we just get rid of the one stage temporary altogether. If you're getting something that is one stage, it's just going to be permanent. Uh, sure. Since it was new anyways, we can just snap it. I'm fine with us doing that. <laughs> uh, when we say permanent, we mean until the end of the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, what else beside that? Is there was something else that I wanted to bring up that's at least for mechanic wise. stat was it ah yeah the um lift protection and bypass protection uh it's right under the healing section i think i'm good with those as is all right because like, you know, I did, like, update the actual, like, effects. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that in order... Now, now, in order to get, like, a single stack of protected, like, let's say, like, without any damage, just, like, give protection is 50 XP. Because guaranteed condition Wait, without damage is 30. Guaranteed condition without damage is 30. Protection is 20. So that's why I wanted to go over this because, you know, mm. yeah, it kind of sucks like having it go up. But the thing is, because of what we did with uh, conditions and all that, it does make it a lot more expensive to get protection. And protection is strong because it just straight up, you don't take hit stun from it, nothing. It just, congratulations, it negates it. So, how powerful is it being able to, first off, bypass it without removing it, but just bypass it? And for lift protection, it destroys one stack of protected per lift protection you have on it. They didn't want it to be, like, you know, something where they could just easily, congratulations, you spent all this getting, like... You spent all this getting level three protection or whatever, and uh, congratulations, I, I put 20 XP on something, so I cleanse it all. I think we should have different uh, mechanics for beneficial uh, effects. All right. So, like, move it out of the conditions thing and instead put it in like the healing tab probably something similar to that because like the the point of the 10 percent for conditions is you're talking about forcing these onto an opponent but if you are willingly taking the condition, I don't feel like you need to roll that uh, percent chance. Yeah, which actually was going to be what I was going to talk about next with negatives. If it would also count for the negative of like, you know, the 30 for like guaranteeing the condition. I'm, I went ahead and read it out and put move to healing section. I don't know about putting it in the healing section, but definitely a different section. Yeah, I just meant for, for now because we were moving it out of this or wherever we move it. That was just where we were moving it to right now, because it's, like, beneficial self-effects. Kind of fit a little bit more, but... I don't really know where else we'd put it. At least for now. But... 
So, how expensive do we want protected to be? Then? Um, I think we'll. Okay, so first off, I think we'll set a new section for self-applied conditions. All right. That case, I don't like I'll it under healing, so. One, two, three. Let's go ahead. Self applied conditions. And I'll insert one above. Conditions. It's new, so I'll just go ahead and green it like that. All right. Uh, I would say keep this up here, the original protected, but make it negative twenty for applying it to an enemy. Yeah. And... I feel like having protected at 25 is good. Alright. It's so more 25. expensive than the removal ones. But at the same time, how often are you going to run into somebody that's actually built a move specifically to remove protected? Because that's XP cost for something that you may or may not run into. Yeah. So that 25 for protected. And uh, what exactly did we want for the, the berry uh, protection? Lift and bypass. I am. Hmm. Eighteen and nine. Hmm. I don't like the idea. Like it's a powerful ability to get past protected. But it's also very situational. Yeah. I'm fine with that. And actually, considering that the self-applied, this would be guaranteed by itself, maybe we should make it 30. Yeah, if it's... If it's gonna be guaranteed by itself, then yeah. Condition... So, because one of the things is, is that, that we're going to have to put is self-applied conditions not wire a um Is that how we want to work? Self-applied conditions do not require percent chance purchase. Yes. All right. And I think so. One thing. Good. Uh, I was gonna say. I figure what we could do on that front is basically for all of these ones that we think can be applied to self, uh, we could 
add 10 to their cost and make it a minus, you know. Because self-applied are going to be guaranteed. Unless they want to go the, you know... Actually, no, that wouldn't work. Because if they want to... No, we'll leave the rest as they are. Just only protected for now. We might come up with other self-applied conditions. Other yeah. beneficial ones later, but... Remove the negative because there's no reason to have a negative on it. Um... Yeah, okay. Hmm. All right, is there anything else that we really need to go over? Seems like that was already decided. What's up, Era? Oh, evil book reading. Oh, yeah, that, uh, Merle's character in the, uh, Pokemon game tomorrow, uh, is, has been reading an evil book. They've got to throw a chair at midnight. It was totally worth it. Yes, it did hurt. However, you were also reading a demon book that was literally given to you in a dream. No. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Do we have anything else that we want to go over with this? Because I think it's good. I might just ping people again. Uh, Kenku, so, I recommend you look into it for feedback, however, maybe don't completely reevaluate your moves. Because the thing is, is that this is just proposed, and we have no clue um, if this will be how it is, like, at the end. So, if you do remake it now, it comes with the risk of knowing that you'll probably maybe have to rework it again at some point for, like, really soon. Yeah, Kenku, don't worry about it right now. Yeah. <laughs> What's your question, Era? Uh, Era, what you would do is you would buy whatever damage you want, like, you know, damage over time, power, guarantee, whatever. Building power, consecutive use, just whichever one you want to use, you would buy the damage. And then what you do is, because it would be wrap, which would probably apply restrained condition, what you do is you would... Um, purchase the first stage of, uh, of Restrained, which is 15. So, like, let's say you did one damage over time. So, 20 plus 15, you're at 35, and then you just buy 10% chances until it was, like, you know, effectively guaranteed. Because this is a damaging move, and it applies a condition. And every single time that you use it, you both deal damage and have a chance to apply the condition more. 
So the total cost would be 80 XP to make a move that deals one damage over time and guarantees applies, like, you know, gives you the chance to apply restraint. Because the, 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 the price of, like, completing a condition at 100%. Um, so, we don't, that, that is a thing that, like, we do want people to do, however, we didn't want to put, like, an actual cost on it, because the exact condition that's being applied may or may not be easier or harder to apply, that's more of a restriction that you work out with the storyteller. Uh, Gimond, it depends, because... The restrained could be a physical item. It could be a, like, you know, like, some sort of telepathic force locking their body. It could be all sorts of things. It depends about the narrative explanation of how they're being restrained with the move. Like, I'd rule that, like, let's say you're being restrained because someone threw a net on you and you teleport out. I would totally accept that as, like, a, oh, yeah, you know, you're going to get free from that. But if someone's locking your limbs to your body and is keeping you still with telepathic force, then teleporting away ain't probably going to do much about it. You know what I mean? All right, so I think that's everything we really need to do. It is also the form of teleportation, but it, it, it depends about the narrative thing. By base, no. However, it would probably count as like a creative solution to get out of it. And so it, it depends about the narrative effect that's being applied. That is actually something that I've been... That we need to stat at the teleport, which I think would probably we'd probably put it under self-applied conditions. Um, because I'm not sure where else we could put it. Uh, guess... yeah, sure. Let's just put it under self-applied conditions. I definitely do not like the idea of normal players being able to teleport as far as, like, Kaza can. Yeah. At least not I don't without see... a feat. Yeah. I think if we have it go by the range rules that we just made, though, that'll be fine. That's what I was that thinking. Means... Yeah. Because that means that, like, you know, if you want to be able to teleport 100 feet away, that's a grand total of 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus whatever the price of teleportation is. So it's whatever the price of teleportation is plus 45. Speaking of, I think that teleport is a pretty good candidate for, like, at least a 50 cost. Uh, what if we make two different versions of it? One that is able to be used in combat and another that's able to be used outside of combat. Actually, no. Never mind. Instead, what we'll do is we'll put in a note with it um, that... Because I think uh, double the range that your nor the combat version would be able to use you get access to both so yeah 50 sounds good yeah because any teleport effect is strong just regardless yeah it, it, it doesn't even matter honestly how far it goes literally being able to teleport five feet away is still useful because of things like you know narratively being able to go oh i'm in a net now i'm not and then uh 
in the notes when used in combat it's based on range bands outside of combat it is double whatever range bands you purchased because i like that to like if you can fo if you're not in a stressful situation i feel like you should be able to teleport further yeah outside of combat double range uh double range from range bands uh also Robert, yes yes it is uh it would be considered a um under stat changes it would be applying a debuff to yourself which is actually something that we do need to go over, though, is the XP cost of self-applied negatives from things like Draco Meteor or whatever that would, like, you know, put you down to, like, stage two. Does it also, it does, like, does it also include, like, the 15 XP? And if it's three, is it, like, does it include the 20 and the 15 that would, you know, uh, especially considering we do have a stat change reset. Well, the stat change reset is only one point towards zero. Okay, because currently it just says resets all stat changes, positive or negative. Oh, that one. Uh, yeah. For 20 XP. Because, like, on one hand, yeah, you know, it it resets all positive and negative stat changes. On the other hand, like, you know, you could just slap it on something. You just, like, effectively, like... If you spend 30 XP, you can just have it as a quick action to reset all your stat changes every time you want to. I would say we get rid of that. Um... Mostly because we built that into the cleanse maneuver. And so the less places that we have to keep track of for, you know... We don't want this to make the cleanse maneuver useless, basically. Yeah. Um... Folded into the cleanse... Maneuver. That's for the reason why it's red. All right, in that case, yeah, I'd say we let like the XP cost of all this like obviously factor in. Hey, Raharu. Hello, Raharu. Yeah, I, I'm. On the one hand, I'm not fond of people being able to get that much of a discount off of their moves. But on the other hand, kiss. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you gotta think, like, you know... If you're if you're putting, a, like, even a temporary three-stage thing, that's a total of 21 XP plus whatever the effect is. So, let's say... And it happens, it, it lasts until the end of their next turn, so they can't even get it for free if they want to do, like, a damage malice and then do it at the end of their turn. Obviously, there's some, like, you know, like, correct, like, actioning, but let's say they, they want to do something like minus three temporarily. Like... The only thing that I want to be careful about is, like, a physical damage attacker minus three their special damage to get free shit. But that'll be hard to rule out. Instead, it'd just be something, like, you know, to warn the storytellers to, like, go, like, hey, no, look, you use a fucking sword and you're physical only. No, I'm not going to let you get a bunch of free stuff by minus three in your special damage constantly. Yeah. That, you have that's... nothing that does special damage. Come on. Be reasonable. Yeah. 
Yeah, that'll be... It's a, like looking... Go ahead. Like, part of the whole... Uh, one of the important things about move creation as a whole is storyteller needs to approve. Um, That's something that has always been in there and will yeah. always be in there. Because, yeah, the storyteller needs to approve of your changes, of your moves. Because, yeah, yep. that exact reason. So, yeah, we can put that in as a note. Yeah, I was about to say, that just needs to be a note to be thrown in. I already knew that that was already a thing. It's just more make it so that way it's really fucking obvious to people that they can't game it like that by going, oh, what if I just get like 40 free XP on this thing by n completely nuking the stat I'll never use and doesn't affect me negatively in any way. Like, okay, buddy, no. <coughs> like, I, I would fully expect someone to call me out if I like, you know, took shade and said, hey, I'm giving him a, a, a special damage malice. And like, I would fully expect you would just look at me and go, excuse me, come the fuck on. Yeah. Man has nothing that does anything special. That'd be completely unreasonable. <laughs> It's like one thing if it's like, I could understand it if like, you know, just keep using my character as an example because I know them pretty well. Vayne is split between physical and special. For him, it would actually matter. He, he is a physical special split character, so that, that would make sense. But for characters that are highly specialized like Shade, it's like, okay, come the fuck on, no. All right, well, anything else to go over on this? I think not. The only thing that I think we should do is, uh, I know we already pinged people, but, uh, you know, when it comes to things like that, uh, I know we pinged them, but we should probably remind them at the start of, like, the games each week. So, like, you know, for the side game, like, remind people that, oh, hey, we have something for you to take a look at. Sounds good. Also, Gimond, um, that is considered a self-imposed restriction, and that is something that gets talked over between the player and the storyteller. So, like, I didn't bring it up right now, but, like, you know, if it stays restricted to Shadows, then, yeah, there's going to be some, like, discount on purchasing the effect for Jet to get teleport for a lot cheaper because he's putting a self-restriction on it. Like, you know, if it's fucking dark and he doesn't have any shadows to use, or, like, it's perfect noon and there's, like, basically no shadow, yeah, obviously that's going to be a lot weaker. But, yeah, things of that nature, that is meant to be a discussion between player and storyteller and... Yeah. Uh, full action moves affect damage in the XP caps. We've already got that noted. I'm just looking at yep. the uh, to-do list. Rewrite yeah. specialties, that's good. Or, not good, it hasn't been done yet, but, you know. Yeah. Things generated from moves are temporary. Still needs to be specified. Range increments, we're good on. Finalized condition update. Well, there are a couple of conditions that we did not go over yet. That is true. Um, with that, uh, the only conditions that we really didn't go over is diseased, poisoned, and wounded. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and go over it. <laughs> Alright. 
So for <clears throat> diseased, uh, this effect is no damage when initially applied. It builds an intensity over time, though. The disease status is unknown until it starts to inflict the actual problems. Left untreated, diseased will lead to death. To detect the disease status prior to symptoms appearing will require only specialized equipment. A simple check will reveal nothing. Unlike other status effects, disease will cause damage to the afflicted stats, reducing them at a rate depending on the level of the disease status. The afflicted is able to make a resistance check to utilize their full stats, but as they lose more stats, the check is harder and harder. Disease come in five vari uh, varieties, one for each attribute. However, the storyteller wishes... However the storyteller wishes to describe the disease, it will begin by impacting one particular attribute, draining it until it is zero and then moving to another attribute. This drain will impact max HP and will get progressively worse without treatment. Without treatment, when the second point is drained, this status effect will advance to the next stage. So, for disease 1, the player will be aware of the loss of a stat. If they do not gain some form of treatment for when it uh, for when the next stat loss happens, it will advance to Disease 2. It is up to the storyteller what constitutes adequate treatment. Reaching zero in all attributes will result in death. Storytellers are strongly cautioned against hitting early parties with a status effect, especially the higher tiers of it. Treating a disease requires the combination of vitality plus integrity checks from the afflicted, as well as medicine checks from themselves or an ally. The actual treatment of it is recommended to be a story element for how it gets fixed. Disease 1 is every 1d6 days, disease 2 is 1d3, and disease 3 is every day. Alright. Well, I need some update on uh, terminology, but honestly, I think that still is pretty good, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that as a base descriptor of it that diseased is perfectly fine i i like the thematics of it attacking attributes instead of other things uh because it basically affects your health but it like it, it causes you to waste away instead of like just dealing health damage um the one thing that i do want to maybe uh, think about is because it does mention that when it drains an attribute to zero, it will then, then move to another attribute, determining maybe what attribute that is, or noting that it is up to the storyteller which attribute will be next. Well, yeah, we'll note that it's up to the storyteller. Uh, let me do that. Yeah. Uh, make that note for when I actually rewrite this. Uh... Um... To the story. If I can type today. <laughs> and uh, for the stat damage, uh, it is up in auxiliary condition rules where I specified that. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure if you read over that section yet or not. I have, yeah. Okay. That section is good with you? Uh, yeah, the stat damage is perfectly fine with me. I think that it is probably, like, just about the best way that we can do it, honestly. Yeah. Because with the, with the stat damage, it's like... I don't know, it, it's just really hard to have it be in a way that isn't punishing with it with it also being effective and i think that this is just about the most reasonable middle ground that we could go with yeah the originally it was that you you can't you just can't even attempt a roll if your stats at zero but i decided to allow yeah. a chance die. I, I was fine with the chance die yeah that's the only uh major difference there um, yeah. Obviously, the only other thing, because we are talking about the disease, is noting in the disease that, you know, having a full rest does not recover one dot until the disease is cured or the symptoms are lessened. That is noted in the stat damage area. Yeah. Um, right here. 
Uh, this is not per stat, but you may choose to get which stat gets healed unless the storyteller says otherwise. Of course, you do need to ensure the condition or other ailment that has caused damage is resolved. It is rather difficult to heal from a body sapping disease while said disease is still ravaging your body after all. Yeah, I was talking about like down in the actual like uh, disease section, noting that as well. Well, for that, it's a, uh, I'm just going to say that they it causes stat damage and well, they can go reference that section for that. Info. OK, I was just going to say that maybe we should have them both places, but yeah. Less places to potentially right. have to update. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, We'll just have to make sure to note exactly what page stat damage is on when we actually finalize it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but other than that, the only other thing uh, is that I think attribute the drain should be 1d10, 1d10 divided by 2, and then every day. So that way we keep our system of d10s. Uh, yeah, go ahead and make that change. Sleep well, Beerus. But I think that that is probably the... Uh, okay, uh, Robert, uh, I'm just gonna say that if uh, the the feedback at questions is uh, visible by everyone, right? Uh, yes. Okay. In the server, there's feedback and questions. Scar feedback and questions. There's a link in there called Move Creation Proposal. Uh, I would heavily recommend that you go ahead and like look through there and see what effects are currently available. And that goes for anyone else that is wondering about that sort of stuff. We've literally already answered those kinds of questions in the document, so that's why we're being like, yeah, can just just go read it. Yeah, just, just go look at the document. It, it, it's there. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that it was actually visible for everyone before just saying that. Because it would, I would feel yeah. kind of dumb if I said to go look in this place and it's like, oh, I can't see that. Yeah, uh, the only one that's not visible to everybody is Scar Dev. Yeah. And that's limited to those that are in a current Scar game. Yep. Makes sense. All right. Uh... So, diseased, we're basically fine with how this works, though. Poison. How do we want poison to work? I mean, we never really tested um, it with how it currently is, but I'm just more, you know. I like the idea of. Oh, right. We can go ahead and we've gone over disease. Let me remove this. Um. It is still a work of progress, so we're going to have to update the terminology. Well, yeah, but at the least the, uh, you know, the information oh, yeah, the, about it. The, the warning. Yeah, the warning can get removed. Yeah. I'll also, um... I also edited up the, the warning up at the top of conditions. So, but the only other thing that we need to go over is poison. Because wounded, we already liked how wounded worked, because we already updated that. Um... At least with, like, the basics of it. Uh, but... Uh, 
I like the idea of poison causing damage over time. And it'll be similar to disease where it causes... Um, maybe poison will be the non-attribute version of diseased. Well, or no, just starts draining max HP. No, I was thinking uh, it'll, you know, affect other stats like expertises or such but no that doesn't make nah, sense. that's that gets that gets too complicated yeah um i think that probably the best way to go about it is that poison just straight up always attacks your current hp but it does it in small numbers Well, unlike blight, where you know they, you can sh you can thp shield it and like yeah. mitigate it that way. Poison is just straight up. You are going to take this damage until it gets resolved. And in combat, it'll be fast, like you know, every turn because like you know, adrenaline's going, your heart's racing, you know, blood's pumping, going through your system. But out of battle, I'm fine with every single hour. You take that damage. And you can't... I'm also fine with the you cannot recover HP from resting. Yeah. Um, uh, now, one thing that we do need to put is can you second wind it? Yes, we'll allow that. Alright. Uh, the other thing that I, uh, say is that it can often, uh, I, I would say that it can often come alongside persistent conditions. Because when you get poisoned, like, yeah, they, it does damage, but... But a lot of poisons also cause paralysis. And then the whole point of this is, uh, you know, being an empty slate for them to come up with whatever poisons or diseases they want. Yeah. And this effect will also <laughs> commonly come with other conditions attached to them, such as paralysis, torpor, berserk, etc. <laughs> oh, furries ruin everything. <laughs> My mind totally went straight to the, uh... Because I know there are some, uh, Venoms and such that, uh... Cause somebody to, uh, be... We'll just put it the Twitch YouTube friendly very excited. In their, you know, unmentionable. I mean, we could always... We could... <laughs> We, we could always use the medical term for it. Oh? Aphrodisiac. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Don Brian. There are some snakes where they bite their victims. I, I don't know the exact variety of them. I just know that this exists. But, yeah, they bite their victim and their victim has a very, very good time before they die. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I went ahead and changed tier one uh, to one, two, and three. Like, you know, each tier is just one more damage per tick. I like that. 
Because it just straight up attacks your CHP, so even increasing it by one is a big thing. Like, if you get hit with a tier three poison, holy shit are you gonna be dying if you don't have a way of restoring that CHP. Yeah. Um, we will put in a note that... Uh, if it is accompanied by those other conditions, the damage from poison supersedes what they cause. Yeah, sure. I feel like Confuse should just straight up be yeah. mentioned for obvious reasons. Hello, Varian. Hey, Varian. I will not spell, it's fine. Yeah, I, I found out about that uh, particular... Uh, Venom slash poison, whatever the actual term is, uh, from furry, uh, special art. Um, so and I, I think that up. should happen <laughs> before the damage ticks. Yes. Yeah. I just feel like that should be noted because then otherwise it'd be like, does it happen before or after? Oh, oh, no, the damage will be applied before you get to resist. Okay. Sorry. After. That's just to keep it standard across everything, but because every, um, every damaging thing applies at the start of your turn. Yeah, yeah. But this is for the out of out of combat check. But yeah, that makes sense. It's fine. Still standardized. Yep. All right, these notes are valid for play. Aja. Now these long-term conditions. Um. I think these are, first off, not going to be available to moves. These are going to be special yeah. storyteller applied things. Or like, you know, things that you can, like, item requirements. Like, you know, if you want to get a poison, you better actually just straight up get that poison. Yeah. Notes, these cannot be applied to moves. They require special circumstances for application up to Storyteller. I like saying special circumstances, so that way, you know, could be an item, could be a move, could be whatever else, but it's up to the storyteller. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're doing some, like, Nurgle roleplay, I don't think it'll be too ridiculous to say that your stuff applies diseased, but that's that's a yeah. different matter. That's a special circumstance. Yeah. Like, maybe it'll be easier to, like, narratively explain why a necrotic-type thing is able to apply diseased. It's like... You know what? That just kind of tracks. But that's more of a special. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Also, mm -hmm. uh, Digi finally moved over, so you should probably go ahead and end this and yep. hop down. Was planning on I was about to mention that. Yep. Alright. Also, remember to remind them that we do have, like, the feedback thing going on. Will do. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this relatively short DevTale stream, as well as an Arc Martin stream brought to you by Conrad. Uh, check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. There on the website, as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that keeps this channel alive and going. I cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. As well as coming by, hanging out, grabbing some merch over at zgfgaming.store, or slapping some stickers on the screen while I'm live. But for now, thank you all so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest a duke. Bye-bye. <laughs>